Welcome to this week's video and I have some new and some old sewing projects. I've put together a little sewing project compilation video. So if you are brand new to the sewing machine, I hope that these give you some ideas because it can be hard finding things to sew that's easy and that are good to practice with. These projects, bar one of them, well, the one at the end, the cushion, you could probably make that within the hour, but all of the other projects you can make probably around 30 minutes. Beginner friendly, scrap fabric friendly. And some of these projects I was thinking would also be easy to sew to sell. Sew to sell. Anyway, if you are new and you have stumbled across this video, maybe you were looking for some sewing videos, welcome to the community. Please do hit that subscribe button, share it if it was helpful, and let's get into the first project. It's time for scrunchies 2.0. We are gonna be making some chunky towel scrunchies because these are actually great for popping on your wrists for when you're doing your skincare and they stop any water running down your arms, which is really annoying. And they also double up as scrunchies as well. To make two microfiber scrunchies, you're going to need two microfiber cloths. Mine are just straight out of a packet and they're 12 inches by 12 inches but I'm going to be cutting it in half. The first thing I'm doing is I'm sewing two cloths together to make one big one. So I'm gonna lay the two of them on top of each other, do a straight stitch down one edge, and then I now have a long piece of microfiber fabric that I'm then gonna fold in half and cut it. So now I have two long strips. They measure roughly 20 sorry five inches is the width and the length is roughly 24 23 and a half don't worry too much about the length the longer it is the more chunky it's going to be and the shorter it is the less kind of ruffles you're going to have so the sweet spot is anywhere from like 22 to 25 inches let's work on one scrunchie at a time so take one piece of fabric fold it in half and straight stitch down that lovely long edge. Do a reverse stitch at the beginning and the end so your stitch doesn't unravel. Pull it through and you're gonna be left with this lovely long tunnel. Also, there is a burrito method of making towel scrunchies, which I did see online, but I just found this good old fashioned way a bit easier, but if you wanna have a little Google, you can check out the burrito method. You could also make these scrunchies with towel material, but from having a little look online, a lot of people prefer the microfiber cloths because they're super absorbent when it comes to moisture. Um, I also seen a girl using the towel scrunchies to pop a bun in her hair while she was doing her makeup because the scrunchie was gonna absorb some excess water, so. There's a few little things I learned from looking online. So now grab a piece of elastic and I like to roughly measure it. When you are making something custom, you may as well make it to fit your wrist. And I have quite a small wrist. So I'm popping the elastic around my wrist and just adding a little extra, giving it a snip. The extra that I'm adding on is just for when I tie a knot, when I slide it through the tunnel. Oh, I let it go. I just let, don't let the elastic go. I found it tricky getting my short elastic through the tunnel, so I improvised and used a ruler. So I positioned the safety pin on the tip of the ruler, fed the ruler through, grabbed the two, two ends, slid the ruler out, and then I tied a knot. There is probably easier ways to do this, but that's all I had to hand. So now we're gonna close up our scrunchie and we are done. So you're gonna wanna get that opening closed. So I fold the raw edges in on each other and I slide one on top of the other. So I'm basically sliding the tunnel in on itself, if that makes any sense. And then you have two ways of closing this. You can hand stitch it, which will be the more professional option. You could do a ladder stitch all the way around or I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm just gonna do a simple straight stitch across that opening to close it. If you're doing a batch of these, that is gonna be the quickest way to do it, but it mightn't be the prettiest. However, I find with the microfiber cloth, you don't really notice the stitch and you get away with it. Okay, let's put these to the test. So, the idea is, okay, I know you wouldn't use 
this much water for washing your face. So the idea is we don't want drips dripping down the arms. So washing my face. Yeah, it's working. Hang on, if I go like this, because that would be the angle. Oh, it is working. Look, we've no drippy coming through. <laughs> Clinical trials. Oh, yes. Tiny little dribble coming out there, but not as much as if I just went dunk. Okay, let's try this one. Yes, it's stopping. It is working, I can confirm. Yeah. I don't, look, there's no drips. No drips. Also, apologies for that noise in the background. There's builders outside. These are a success. <laughs> And also, they do work in your hair. Shaboom, shabam. They're quite chunky in your hair. But apparently, hang on, I've only BB cream on my face because I wasn't planning on shooting my face today. I was just sewing. Um, I have heard people using these to absorb excess moisture in, the hair, in your hair. So let's say you wash your hair and you've towel dried it and maybe, I don't know, you're doing your makeup or you're doing something. Um, this girl put her scrunchie in her wet hair in a bun, like kind of like this. Can you see that? Kind of like that. And she was saying that the microfiber scrunchies absorbed more of the water while she was doing her makeup and getting ready. So just another little thing. I learned about the microfiber scrunchies, but the goal of mine was to make them for my pal Karen, who had seen people um, wearing these, doing their skincare, and stopped the water dribbling down their hands. And I can confirm that they did a trick. Let me know if you make them, they're quite fun. <laughs> okay, on to the next project. Grab an old towel and some scrap fabric and we're gonna make a really pretty headband that you can use for doing your makeup, doing your skincare. The idea of this one is to hold your hair back while you're doing your beauty bits. So you can create a template, a paper one, if you're making a batch of these. So it's gonna be 25 inches in length but you're gonna round the edges or you could do a different shape on the edges, you could square them off but I just like the rounded edge and it's going to be 25 times 2.5 so 2.5 inches is going to be the width of your headband you can make this bigger you can make it smaller I find for my size head two and a half inches is grand so place the two pieces of fabric together with the right sides facing each other so that just means that the patterned and the pretty sides are facing each other and then grab your sewing pins and pin the fabric in place you're then going to stitch all the way around but you are going to leave an opening so that you can pull it the right way through and make sure the opening is big enough that it's going to fit your hand. As I was making these I was thinking that these would do really well in the likes of the wedding industry so for anyone who's new I do have some Cricut videos and I was thinking that you could possibly if you were making these to sell if you personalize them with you know bride or bridesmaid um with some pretty fabric i think if you were making these to sell they would do really well if you could personalize them so before turning them the right way out you can trim off any bulk so if there's any towel material that's a bit bulky and then you can just snip around the curves this will just give you a better curved edge when you turn it the right way out So get your iron handy and once you have it nice and fixed and it's the right way out, I like to give it a good press and iron that opening closed on itself before doing a top stitch to close everything off and give it a nice professional finish. So the iron is your friend here and that's going to get it nice and neat so you can take it to the machine and do a top stitch all the way around and that will close your opening.
I just want to share a little mistake. If I do, so on this edge, I stitched this on and you can't notice the, the stitching underneath. But for this piece, if I do a stitch on my machine, you will see it on this side. So I'm going to use some fabric glue to stick this on. Not ideal, but I don't want to see a top stitch. To avoid this, if you stitch this piece of Velcro onto this towel a couple of steps back before you sandwich the two of them together to stitch around, you can avoid that problem. Let's dig into the basket of scrap fabric and we're going to make some hand warmers. You're also going to need some thread, some pins, some rice and some essential oil but that's optional. Give your fabric a good iron before cutting it so there's no wrinkles in the fabric and set up your machine. Put out two squares of fabric that are 5 inches by 5 inches. Place the right side of the fabric together and line up the edges. Pin the fabric together and make sure to leave a gap large enough that you can turn it the right way out and that will also be big enough to fill with rice. Also, I use a half an inch seam allowance for this. Before turning the fabric the right way out, I just clipped all of the four corners. paper as a funnel if you need to to insert the rice into the little bag that you've just made but I had a jug that had a spout on it and I found that that was really handy. I filled the bag about three quarters the way full and I left a gap so that I could easily stitch it closed. Now you could do a hand stitch on this but would you believe me if I told you I had no hand stitching needles they were too big the ones that i had were too thick so i just was lazy and i stitched a straight stitch across to close the gap if you want to add some essential oils in i added about three to four drops you can mix the essential oil beforehand in a little bowl just be careful when you're doing it the way i am that you don't get any essential oil on the fabric as it might mark it to heat these warmers up, give them 30 to 40 seconds in a microwave. I found 30 seconds was plenty, but it's gonna depend on the wattage of your microwave. I also made a larger one that will be perfect as more of a heat patch, so you could use it on your shoulder, or you could use it on a tummy when you have cramps. And this is 12 inches by six inches, if you wanna try those dimensions for that size. And I found that that one took a bit longer to heat up. It took about a minute to heat up but you could always start slow and then build up the heat. So if you've ever wondered how I get my hair curly without heat, well a tiny bit of heat because you do have to dry your hair first. I use one of these but as you can see it's really bashed. So this is one I bought, it's a heatless hair curler and mine has <laughs> mine's been through the wars. As you can see the sponge on the inside has just gone flat, hairspray on it, yeah. It's not looking too fresh. I'm gonna make a new one. I have some like satin kind of ribbon. I actually think this is Christmas tree ribbon, but this material is gonna be perfect to make a new hair wrap. And I'm gonna show you how I make it. And I'm gonna give you all the dimensions and everything so you can do it yourself. I'll give you a little demo at the end and I'll share how I wrap it around. I did actually, the curls that are in my hair today, I did actually do with my wonky one. If I had a nice consistent, hair tube thingy, my curls would be a bit more 
consistent. <laughs> but anyway, this is what I do to get this kind of tousled, loose look. I wash my hair um, in the evening. I just blast it rough dry with the hair dryer and then I stick in my curler, which I'm about to make a new one. If you have some satin or silk fabric, that would be perfect for this project as I read that it reduces the frizz in your hair, but do use whatever you have. So if cotton or poly cotton is all you have, you can still make this. Measure out and cut a piece of fabric that is 35 inches in length and 3.5 inches in width. Fold your strip and fabric in half with the right sides of the fabric facing each other. You can use pins for this, but I just find when I'm working with a silkier fabric that the pins can mark it, so I'm just using these sewing clamps instead. Starting at one of the ends of the fabric, place it into the machine and do a straight stitch across. With the needle still in the fabric, lift your foot, press your foot, sorry, and turn it and then stitch down the length of your hair roll. When you get to the bottom, don't stitch across, you're going to leave an opening so that we can stuff this. It's much easier to use a safety pin to turn this the right way out. I didn't have one, but because this isn't too narrow, it's easy enough to pull it through with your hands. Once I had it pulled the right way out, I then used some filler to fill it really tight and I packed all of the filler in. The filler that I'm using is actually from a cushion pad that I had. The hardest part of this project was actually filling up the length of tube with the filler. So take your time with this and I just used my ruler to push it down to the end. Once I got to the end, I tucked in the raw edges and I just did a straight stitch across to seal this up. Here's a quick demo on how I use it in my hair. So I just use a claw clip to secure it to the center while I wrap it around and I do it one side at a time. I start at the front with my fringe and layered pieces and then I just continuously wrap it around and tie a scrunchie in at the end. Once the two sides are done, sometimes I'll tie a knot in the back and then I sleep on this overnight. I leave it overnight and then I take it out the next morning. Now, I also want to share that you can, I have seen people do this with lots of things. I've seen people do it with leggings. Nah, who wants to sleep with leggings on your head? I find these comfy enough 
to sleep in. Another thing I've seen people do is doing it the opposite way, but I just do this way because this is what works for me, so play around. The thicker your strip of hair, so the th do thicker strips of hair, is what I'm trying to say, for looser waves, and smaller and more strands for tighter, tighter curls. Am I saying that right? Um, I'm gonna take this down my hair because my hair's overdone. I've also seen people using dressing gown belts. So the belt off a dressing gown. But the only thing with that is, I'd say it's gonna cause more frizz in your hair. So I've seen like satin and silk fabric recommended for keeping your hair frizz free, which is why I went for this fabric. But use whatever fabric you have. You could practice this with like, you know, bed sheet fabric or if you have, um, cotton length of fabric, you could use that as well. Whatever works for you. It also takes a couple of goes to get a knack that works for your hair type and your hair cut. So don't be worried if you do it the first time and you're like, oh man, my hair's frizzy. Do try it a couple of, couple of times to get a knack that works for you. The knack that works for me is when I'm sticking it in, so eye level, I want my first curl so for example, this one to be eye level. So when I'm doing this front section, I make sure it's around there. Does that make sense? Sorry for looking through the viewfinder. I know that's probably really annoying, but I have no mirror, well, behind me. You could also do a shorter one if you had shorter hair, um, but I like having the little bit extra because then you can tie it behind if you want it. So yeah, it does work for short hair, but just bear in mind where you position the curls. So if you have like a bob and you just want a few curls, start up here at the eye level and then keep going till it's down. I'm really bad at giving hair tutorials. This ain't my jam. I also have a tutorial if you wanna make scrunchies on an older video as well. Don't worry if the ends are quite curly because it will fall um, throughout the day. And sometimes I'll just spray a bit of like texture spray in it um, just to give it a bit of fluff. And also if it, if you do it the first time, you're like, oh my God, my hair is huge. Um, you could tame it with a curling iron, which defeats the purpose of the heatless curls. But if you do need to tame it, it's kind of easier when your hair is already curly to hold the curl and then just throw in one or two curls around the head just to give it a bit more, how would we say? Maybe definition structure, I don't know the word. Anyway, let me know if you try it and if it worked for you. And if it didn't work for you, I'm sorry. And if I gave you a bad hair day, I'm extra sorry. Why is it typical? It's been lovely and sunny and warm. And the moment I go to make myself some, I want to make some loungers easy sew. I'm hoping they'll be easy to sew. I want to make some loungers for my chairs out in the back garden so I can sit and chill and be comfy. But gone cold <laughs> and I think it's due to rain. Typical. Anyway, let's go into hot press. I know I have a blanket that I want to um, recycle the fabric. Hands up who has too many blankets in the house. Bit of a blanket buyer, bit of a blanket hoarder. I have to stop myself. I have a blankie. Oh, look at the state of me hot press. Anyway, I have, oh, this quilted blankie, but it's actually from Penny's Hun. I got this years ago. I do love it, but I have another one that's similar. I think I got this on sale in pennies. Primark, if you're in the UK. One side is this. The other side is this. Like, I think I got it on sale for 10 euros years and years ago. But I'm going to use this material to create... I should have enough for two. Yeah, because it's, I've loads of fabric. Like I probably even have enough fabric to do cushions. Like, not bean bags, but yeah. Um, I'm gonna recycle this and we're gonna make some outdoor, like seat pad cushions. Hope that makes sense. Sure, you'll, you'll see anyway. First thing I gotta do is measure measure the chair, and then you'll get an idea of what I'm doing. Let's go. 
So I began by measuring the length of the chair to determine how long I wanted my cushion to be. And then I also measured the width. And I'm also lolling at me using a good old builder's measuring tape and not my usual sewing tape. But sure, here we are and it did the job. I then transferred the measurements onto my old blanket and then I cut the first strip out. Once I had the first strip out, I went back to the chair and I just laid it on it to see like was it too big was it too wide now i did leave an extra half an inch for the seam allowance and um, so once i was kind of happy with that i then used that first piece that i cut as my template to cut out the rest of the pieces so you're going to have a front piece and a back piece and then we're going to make handles the handles are totally optional but if you want to kind of carry this or fold it over um, and have it as like a little portable picnic cushion then the handles are really cute I just want to share a mistake I kind of made because my fabric is too thick. So you would have saw me just there fold this in half, put it through, um, stitch at the end, and then the idea would be to pull it the right way out. But because my fabric has padding in it, because it is a um, kind of quilted material, this is too thick and your girl can't get it through. So I sandwiched two of the pieces together left the ends open because these ends are going to be tucked into the piece anyway. So I have, I just need to iron this. Um, so I have a thicker strap that is going to look like this and it's going to be on uh, either end of the cushions. This is also optional because the reason why I'm sticking a little handle on is so that you can fold the cushion over on itself and you'll have two handles and then you can pick the handles up and walk off with your little cushion so it's like a portable kind of cushion well it can be a picnic cushion as well so you can fold it in half so that is these will stitch in to the thing nice little grip on it it's still, I'd say it could do with being a, a little bit smaller, but I want to use this material. So that method does work, but if your fabric is too chunky, no. So I have some, I do have some more scrap of the edge of the blanket that I can make. I'm making two cushions, I need to make three more of these. So here I am just making the straps um, the final way that I've done them. So I did the right sides of the fabric facing each other, a straight stitch down one side, a straight stitch down the other side. I turned it the right way out and you'll also see that I did a decorative top stitch. When material is kind of chunky like that, I think this top stitch just gives it a lovely finish.
Now just watch carefully to see how I put the handles. Make sure that they are facing inwards so that when we stitch all around this piece and you turn it the right way out, the handles are going to be on the outside. I know that this can be confusing for beginner sewers because I used to get confused by this as well. Um, so this is how you position the handles before you stitch around. Mr. Blackbird is very intrigued by what I'm doing. I don't know if you can see him in the corner. He'll come in shot now. So do leave a gap on the side so we can turn this the right way out. So I'm going to leave a decent size gap, maybe like two hands full. And I'm gonna stitch all the way around. Leave the opening, turn it the right way out. When I'm going over the handles, because the fabric is quite thick, I might just do a bit of a, a reverse stitch when I go over the handles. And I'm gonna leave a good half an inch um, seam allowance on this. So I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm going to go all the way around, leave the gap, and then we're gonna flip it out. And then we're gonna stuff it. Just before I turn the fabric the right way out, I'm just clipping the corners and I'm also just taking off any excess bulky material on the sides. Just be careful not to snip too close to your line of stitching or you will weaken the seam and your stitch could unravel. The things you said, you said to me, to me, it seems like you like me too. Can't take it slow, make sure we do this right. Cancelled all my plans to be with you tonight. Tonight, so just sit with me, talking to the night until the morning, building can mystery. I don't think I ever want to go come closer next. Tell me, trying to find another way to say this, but I think, I think we were meant to be. You make me anxious. I think I might be stuck on you. I love the things you did, you did for me, for me, it seems like. You're dropping clues There's no need to rush So let's just take our time Dropping everything Cause you're stuck on my mind My mind So just sit with me Talking to the night and to the morning Building can mystery next to me trying to find another way to say this but i think i think we were meant to be oh we were meant to be oh we were meant to be oh we were meant to be, oh, we meant to be. so just sit to the night into the morning building can history I don't think I ever wanna go come closer next to me trying to find another way to say this but I think I think I was actually just taking a picture of my headband my makeup headband and I realized that this coordinates beautifully with my outfit today <laughs> Green, yeah, I am matching. This was a happy accident, it was not planned. Uh, let me know if you make anything. And I'm gonna link to some other uh, sewing videos. So I have a playlist, so if you're just here for the sewing bits, I do have a playlist that has loads of videos. Again, all beginner friendly, scrap fabric, make to sell, sew to sell. And um, I hope you get some ideas and it inspires you to dust the cobwebs off your sewing machine. Sorry.
I just see me hair in the viewfinder to head of me. And please double check that you are subscribed. A lot of people watching my videos are not subscribed and it would make a massive help to the channel to keep it going if everyone could just check that they are subscribed. And thanks to my regular viewers, you know the drill, cheeky thumbs up. I'll see you in Sunday's garden video. Bye.